Though Advent has four Sundays, we celebrate with three virtues, three comings of Christ in three tenses, three threes. With Christmas decorations all over, it's easy to forget that Advent is a time of coming rather than a preparation for Christmas. The gospel about the coming of the Lord when we least expect him makes it clear that we're not merely preparing for December 25th. That day, we celebrate the past tense coming of the Lord, the birth of Jesus. He was born like us, grew up like us, died like us. He had a mother, a father, relatives, teachers, friends, and foes. He worked as a carpenter. He called followers and directed them to a new way of life before God, long ago and far away. And we believe in him. Faith is our love of that man. We love him in the life he led, in the scriptures that teach us of him, in the church that guides us to him. We gather each week to remember him by breaking bread. We commit ourselves to saying that he was real, not a legend. He was someone we can love as we love other people we have known in the past, people no longer present. But there is a difference because his coming in the past is not all. We also await his future coming. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. I'm not sure I want to meet the one who knows all there is to know about me. At some time in the future, I will face the absolutely just judge who will know exactly what I deserve and will render the fairest judgment on my life. Guilty. Yet, we wait in joyful hope for his coming. Do we look forward to being forced to see how sordid our lives have been? No. We look forward to the full verdict. Guilty, but forgiven. That is the source of our hope, love in the future tense. We love the Lord who will come bringing final forgiveness and final joy to our lives. I fall into problems, though, if I concentrate solely upon the past and future comings of the Lord. Especially as Christmas approaches, I get sentimental over Christmas's past. Eventually, I forget the real man Jesus altogether. If I focus upon his future coming as judge and savior, I get complacent. After all, we've already waited two millennia. In addition, the future is an abstraction. At least I've lived through the past and have some idea of what it was. The future may be daydreamed about, but my guesses are empty speculation, so I don't bother. I sit back and forget. That is why the most important coming of Christ is neither in the past nor the future. It is his coming today in the present tense. He comes in my time, my life. Ironically, this most important coming is often the hardest to recognize. His past coming is available to us in the Gospels, his future coming is not available to us, though when it comes, there will be no mistaking it. His present coming is paradoxically present, yet hidden. It's too present, too quick for us to devote time to recognizing it. He sneaks up on us, demanding instant recognition and instant response. And he does it in disguise. It takes a ready heart to see him. It takes the fullness of the love that shows itself as faith and hope, love in itself. Jesus comes in someone needing help, the child lost in a crowd, the lonely neighbor, the family member across the table. He's the child who asks a wise question, the adult who gives a wise answer. He may be a poet, a politician, a pauper, or a prince. Sometimes I even catch a glimpse of him in the mirror. He comes in so many disguises that I usually miss him. When Jesus comes in the present, he looks for real, practical love, not an emotion, but action. My faith means nothing if I can't see and love him today. My hope is wasted if I refuse his invitation to love him now. If I'm not willing to see the Lord today, I have reason to fear seeing him at the end. Faith, hope, and love are virtues directed toward past, future, and present. In Advent, 
we remind ourselves to be ever ready to meet and love the Lord who has come, who will come, who comes.